Regan Robertson here, president of Productive Dentist Academy and host of Everyday Practices. Before we get started, I want to let you know this week only, we are offering our once a year chance at getting 12 months of PDA for free. That's right. Register for a 2022 productivity workshop and you will receive 12 months of PDA on demand and a two hour one-on-one -on -one business advisory session with us. Not only does this save you over $3,000, but doctors that attend and use use PDA On Demand report doubling productivity in mere months. You can get yours this week if you sign up before December 3rd. Go to www.productivedentist.com slash Cyber Monday to access or call us directly at 1-800-757-6077. Now let's get productive. Welcome to the Everyday Practices Podcast. I'm Reagan Robertson, and my co-host, Dr. Chad Johnson, and I are on a mission to share the stories of everyday dentists who generate extraordinary results using practical, proven methods you can take right into your own dental practice. If you're ready to elevate patient care and produce results that are anything but ordinary, buckle up and listen in. Welcome to Everyday Practices. I am your host, Reagan Robertson, here today, not in practice, not extracting anything, not implanting anything. My wonderful co-host, Dr. Chad Johnson. Chad, how are you today? Yay. Good. Glad to be back. Uh, and a great interview with Dr. Bruce on the last episode. Thank you for uh, covering for me while I was, uh, you know, just for the doctors that are listening to this, because that's the majority of our listeners, right? Um, just making the November, December kind of production that needs to get done in order to take a Christmas vacation, you know? So yeah, just uh, making that happen. And <clears throat> no, this is not my processed radio voice. Uh, this, I, I kind of have a cough and <laughs> Reagan's kind of got the same stuff going on, even though we have a couple thousand miles <laughs> separating us. So glad to be on using our voices, though they may not be perfect. <laughs> Yep, it is cold and flu season. If you have children, you guys all know what we're talking about. Uh -uh. So <laughs> rocking the rocking the cough drop crew today. That's right. Uh, yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, Chad, you and I, um, we were talking about fine tuning the piano with regards to leadership and regards yep. to growth and all of that. And the guest we have on today is a, is really a special um, a special guest invitation for mm -hmm. that because of that that topic. And one of the things you know. As business leaders, both of us ourselves, I really wanted to ask you first before we introduce our guest, from your perspective, why is it so important, Chad, for a dentist, specifically a dentist and business owner, to have um, a high-level thinking partner, a strategic advisor as you grow your practice? You know, I just uh, came into the office this morning and was talking with a patient who's uh, who I've known for uh, 30-ish years. And um, so, you know, a good confidant of a kind of person, not just your average patient that is just like, hey, you know, see you later kind of stuff. I've known her. She's a good friend. Um, well, she's my friend's mom, you know, so like, you know, her three boys I'm good friends with. So I'm talking with her um, and, you know, I just said, you know, even uh, at church, it's tough to find uh, uh, confidants and people that are equals with understanding the business owner difficulties without sounding like absurd, like you're whining. For example, if I said, man, you know, I've got, I've got a hundred thousand dollars worth of bills that I need to get paid by next month. People would be like, oh, big problems, you know, must be rough. And so then the, what you learn maybe after a while is don't bring that stuff up with normal people because, you know, they don't get it. And, um, and it's a protective measure, but you, you don't go fully disclosing all your problems to everyone. Um, and so then you end up more in a, a position of a, uh, I don't know if consultant would be the right word, but you're listening to other people's problems and you're almost like their counselor when they get to share their problems, but you don't really get to share yours. And you get to listen to their big ideas, but you can't share your big ideas. So the, the trouble then becomes, well, in a multi-doctor practice, I suppose if there were a couple owners, they get to as, um, as partners and as equals, 
uh, as colleagues, they get to share their ideas, but not all dentists are colleagues in the sense that uh, someone that's an associate isn't the same kind of colleague as a business owner Absolutely. in mentality. You know, mm -hmm. they might be both drilling the same kind of tooth and they might share values with that kind of stuff, but they're not uh, the same values as far as the way that you're daily trained to be and to not to be. So I guess that was uh, just, you know, my first thought when we were looking at um, bringing Denny into this conversation mm -hmm. and talking about how, you know, a thinking partner or, or someone that you can be a confidant with to bounce ideas off of and to, uh, you know, think about solutions. And I don't know, just even just to be able to vent about stuff, to have a safe space to be able to give those kinds of dialogue thoughts. And um, a lot of times, for example, that's my workout buddy, Ryan, um, who's not a dentist, but um, he has a successful business and we can share ideas and we can say, like, he can say, man, I've got to hire three people by the end of the year. Now, if you're just a regular employee at, you know, the postal office, you might, and, and you're not into hiring, hiring three employees doesn't mean much to you. I mean, you get what that means, but it, it doesn't have gravity to it. Yes. Uh, but understanding, you know, from someone that's like, oh, I've been there before. I know be it what being down three employees is like, and you know, the HR responsibilities of that. And in the meanwhile, you're trying to pay the bills, you know, so few people get it. So having someone that is part of that pinnacle crowd that says, I, I hear you. And I can, you know, think with you through it as opposed to, oh, well, it sucks to be you, Mr. Richie Pants. It's just like, that's not what it's, this is about. You know, everyone has problems. Elon Musk has problems and he needs people that are over, um, that are willing to overlook that they're not a billionaire, but they can still understand his problems. Yes. There, there we have it. <laughs> Okay. Why do you, you always blow my mind? You really do. I love how we can connect. That is exactly how I have been feeling lately. Um, you, you just reached in and kind of, ex you definitely described my own feelings as well. Like my friends don't want to hear about whatever business challenges yeah. I'm having or where I want to grow personally as a leader or where I want to executive grow Reagan. They don't care about, they want yeah, to hear from they, mama Reagan. Right. Exactly. Why would they care about that? And I actually, so my good friend, I even, I think I gave him a shout out at one of our all company wide meetings. Um, he's one of my best friends and he's the gentleman that is a general manager for vape shops of all yes. like totally, obviously completely different industry than what I'm in. And he gets it. He is a fantastic strategic thinking partner because he, he um, even though they're completely different challenges, he understands the business objectives and the business growth goals. And so it's really nice if I have, um, if I have someone to go and say, I'm just kind of trying to work through this. Can you think through this with me? That is right. exactly how I feel. And I'll tell you, this is a perfect segue in, into introducing Denny Hall. So Denny Hall is PDA's PDA uh, Director of Client Success. And when I met Denny Hall, gosh, I, a few months ago, three, four months ago, um, she blew me away immediately with this um, powerful and also graceful at the same time listening capacity. And she brings in all of this other world experience on business in addition to healthcare. So there's the healthcare element of it, but there's also this outside industry um, experience that, that told me that not only would, P, would PDA benefit PDA doctors would benefit from having Denny's expertise, but even at an executive level, um, PDA would benefit from her leadership and her guidance and her strategic thinking. So that is why we've invited you, Denny, to the show today. Welcome to Everyday Practices. How are you, mm -hmm. Denny Hall? <laughs> I am doing fantastic. Thank you so much for that great introduction. That was amazing. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah, absolutely. So I know, Denny, you have you have been in the um, corporate space. You've you've done um, Home Depot. You have been with um, uh, high end eyewear. So optometry. You've also been in dentistry. I bet there's a lot more that I don't even know. <laughs> but looking across your great landscape and your years of experience, um, you know, with leadership, what are some of the what are the some of the benefits that you see to having a thinking partner, and how is how has that served you? in your lifetime? Well, I think when you are thinking about a thinking partner, I've always said one of the ways that I learn best is through arguing and about <laughs> half the population runs in the other direction. But I learned it when I was a very young leader that 
um, if I could argue with someone about a point, I would see it very differently than if I just used only the knowledge I had on, in my head. And it really goes to something that's called confirmation bias. And confirmation bias is really just the tendency uh, to believe the evidence that confirms our own beliefs, our pre-existing beliefs. And then we discount any information that uh, comes across our, our threshold that doesn't agree with us. So take for instance, like a pros and cons list. Like if I wanna buy a shiny red, beautiful sports car and I sit down to write a pros and cons list a Ford because Mustang. I want that car. A Ford I'm Mustang? Have, I'm <laughs> or a Mustang. Can we make yeah. this a Ford Mustang? Or, you know, could be a minivan, but no, it's yeah. a Mustang. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. It's a Mustang. Keep going. All right. So uh, you have a pros and cons list. If I really want that shiny red sports car, then my pros list is going to be very long and my cons list is going to be very short. But if I get with my significant other who doesn't really care if there's a shiny red sports car in the garage, we would balance that pros and cons list out. And maybe there's some things on, on the pros and cons list then that would sway me in a different direction. So, but that's called confirmation bias. And I think the thinking partner really is someone who challenges your thinking and really causes you to modify or change your paradigms, your assumptions, uh, any actions that you were going to take. Um, I know that um, I was reading an article in Psychology Today a few weeks ago. It was odd that I was asked to talk about this today. And really, what I was the article was about Warren Buffett and uh, uh, how he actually changed the way that he invested and became the second most powerful and most financially wealthy man on the planet. And it came from a thought partner, a thought partner that pushed him outside of what he was normally thinking and got him thinking in a different direction. So I love that you brought up Elon Musk because, you know, he probably has a whole bunch of crazy ideas and someone has to talk him down off the ledge every once in a while because he's, you know, he's going to do crazy stuff if he doesn't. So I think when we think about this in terms of dentistry, uh, you know, dentists are great at being dentists and business people are great at being business people. And the combination of the two really creates um, a, a partnership that tests people's thinking patterns. People get into a way of thinking and uh, coaches or consultants can actually push you outside of what you're most comfortable with. And that would be, uh, you know, the information that you have in front of you. Mm -hmm. I think I'm understanding, Denny, now the term when they say, you know, coaching isn't for everyone. Mm -hmm. Getting consulting isn't for everyone. But I really don't think I ever looked at it from the angle of perhaps some insecurity. So when I hear challenge, and I think that for me, that's the only way that I know how to operate. I assume probably from doing debate, starting out as an eighth <laughs> grader, I think I just expected that people are going to constantly be questioning um, methodologies and whatnot. But, uh, you know, in that resisting, how do you help people? Are you able to help people? Are we able on this show today to kind of help people if you're feeling that insecurity of, I don't know that I want people to be questioning, uh, you know, my thought process. Is there any way to get over that kind of that fear, that hump? Well, I think uh, repeated discomfort creates comfort. <laughs> so I have to push myself into that place where I'm uncomfortable enough times that it becomes comfortable. And um, it's a mind, it's a mindset. You know, it's a mindset. If I truly want to be the most successful in whatever I'm doing, mm -hmm. I have to be willing to step out there and be uncomfortable. And, you know, there are usually a set of people that are less likely to be, uh, you know, to be able to face that confirmation bias their own. Um, they're insecure or they have anxiety issues or, you know, they're really sensitive to rejection and they don't want to be put into that social situation where my ideas are being tested. And so, you know, the way that I would do it if I were having this conversation, and I, I can give you an example of that. I had a boss and his name was Paul Eisen. And he said to me, Denny, do you have to argue about everything? And I said, <laughs> I've gotten really comfortable with arguing. And Paul, it would be really nice if you would get comfortable with arguing, because I think together, once we, we, we get our ideas together, they become so much stronger if we argue about it a little bit. And 
there are just people on earth that are never going to be comfortable with arguing. But I finally got him into the way of thinking of, you know what, let's discuss this. Let's let's have opposing views because that those opposing views are what's going to make the full idea really strong. And I know that you've heard it before, but it's not the one idea that actually creates the bigger idea, but it's the bringing up of that idea that gets someone to go down a different path of thinking. So parallel thinking is is important to think about when we're talking about this as well, is that it isn't what you said, it's what I thought about when you said it, that gets me to move in a new direction. So even if I I didn't understand what you were saying, or I didn't agree with what you were saying, it really makes me like a branch of a tree, take a step down a different branch. And maybe come up with a solution that's stronger because we had the disagreement or the argument about how it might be executed. So that's why I say it's just so important that that thinking partner not be someone like you. They shouldn't be someone exactly like you, because if they're exactly like you, you'll never think any differently. So you've got to pull in thinking partners that have a different experience than you have, that have a different background than you have, that are different politically than you are, because they're going to bring that that what I call creative tension to the relationship. And it's in that creative tension where all of the creativity happens. It reminds me of Toby on the office. And <laughs> Toby uh, the the HR manager? Yeah, I think that's what he was. And because uh Steve Carell, yeah, he'd always he'd be like, I've got a great idea. And you know, he's on a disc profile probably in the I crowd. <laughs> Um, ask me how I know. And, yeah. and so he'd say, you know, Hey, I've got a great idea. We're going to have, you know, um, free cupcakes for everyone every day. And, uh, then Toby says, yeah, I don't think that'll get approved because, you know, some people might have allergies to the stuff that you put in the muffins and Steve Carell's character, I, Michael Scott, he'd be like, Toby, you ruin everything, you know, and and it was the idea that it's just like, I hate not having someone to confirm what I want to hear. And yet, you know, having that, (laughs) that quintessential HR person to be like, yeah, I don't think we can do that. Because you know, this and that, as much as the I person doesn't want that, it's just like, well, it's probably necessary, to some degree in some relationship, if you're willing to, uh, because you can still have the cupcakes, but find a way to be like, well, maybe we should have a consent form. Maybe we could, you know, offer non gluten, you know, like gluten free cupcakes for those people, you know, and and then at the end, at, in the end, you've got a fusion of the thesis, antithesis, and then the um, what, what do they call the the uh, re- resolution of that, you know, like the fusion mm-hmm. of those two ideas. I love it. I think what's really interesting here, you use the term arguing, Denny, and I, in the time that I have known you, and especially working through some complex situations with you, uh, you don't, you've never raised your voice. I've never heard you raise your voice. Um, And in fact, uh, I have experienced firsthand you um, help me get to a new way of thinking with what feels like very little tension to me. Um, and I think so that it, this is really interesting to me when you say argue, what, what does that process look like for you? You don't mean shouting, arguing, obviously not at all. And you, and you, so there's a lot of trust and respect that you bring to the table. So choosing a proper thinking partner is very important as well, because I have had leadership, um, you know, situations where there is yelling, there is arguing, the arguing for arguing sake isn't, isn't so fantastic. So uh, what, what is your discovery process like? I'm really curious how you, how you break down new relationships and, and get into that space where they are trusting you and you are trusting them to be each other's thinking partners. Well, I think, first of all, the demeanor piece of it, I, again, when we say the word argue, everybody gets this really bad image in their head. So it's really challenging people's beliefs about what is arguing or having a differing opinion than someone else. I think it, um, if I'm in a new relationship, I'm going to state my intent up front. So do you mind if I just discuss this with you? And it might sound like arguing, but it really isn't. I just, it's the way that I learn. And everybody gets, whew, they take a breath. 
because they realize that I'm not arguing because I disagree with them. I'm challenging the thoughts that they're having or challenging my own thoughts, probably challenging my own even more than theirs. Um, so I think that it's first practice. And I always say, you know, if I'm dealing with someone who's new at this, who's new at challenging ideas and doing it in a way that's, uh, you know, helpful, I always say, give them grace for the delivery because they're probably not going to do it well the first couple of times you ask them to do it. And it, you have to work at it to get that trust with someone and make it okay. Like if I, if someone disagrees with me and I have some sort of a, body language reaction to that, like I cross my arms or I stop talking to them or something like that, they're never going to argue with me again. So I, you know, I have to really watch what I do when I'm having that kind of a discussion with someone and I've worked really hard. So it doesn't feel like arguing, but it does feel like just a little discussion about this. Let's just push back on each other a little bit. You make the safe environment by verbalizing. It's safe to push back. You know, it's okay to push back on me now. And now as a leader, I'm responsible for my reaction to that pushback. And that's my ownership in the discussion is I own how I, re how I react to ha them pushing back on me. And so it's a little bit of a mindset game, you know, a mind shift. You go into that discussion knowing that we're going to have a differing opinion here and it's going to be okay. But it takes practice. So, you know, when you're first learning how to do it, just say, hey, I'm just learning how to do this. Thinking partnership is new to me. And I realize that you and I have a differing opinion on this particular topic, but I really want to test my skill here. So let's have this discussion. And at the end, let's debrief. You know, what were some of the things I did that made you not feel safe? How did I make you feel safe? Those kinds of things. So it takes practice. It's like any other skill we get. You got to exercise the muscle. Huh. You are a master at that. You, you have like, there was a phrase that you used right in that beginning. And I remember when we first started working together, you were saying, you know, that, you know, you were like just gathering information and just kind of, it was very low key. And I remember thinking, not even that I had walls up, I didn't think I had any walls up. And I remember just being like, this is, you just said safe. I don't, I never attributed it at that point, but I can tell you now thinking back, I felt totally safe. And thinking we're going to make exceptional progress together. We're going to hit goals together. Like I had full faith and hope from, from that initial conversation. And you used very calming demeanor and um, uh, had a calming demeanor and had a calm way of approaching it. But in a way that's, you could say you were arguing because you were trying to figure out why I got to the conclusion I did. And if I had tried it a different way, are you hearing this, Chad? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> How does that, I mean, does that reflect Chad, like you've had diff many different coaching relationships with PDA and outside of PDA, or you've kind of run the gamut of it. Is that, does that reflect to some of the thinking partner experiences that you've had? As I've switched <clears throat> recently um, to having Joanne coach um, as Carrie's kind of taken a different position within PDA and um, it's neat to see uh, Joanne figure out how to challenge me in a fresh way. And I've been excited about that, actually, like I've been um, anticipating, I think um, she's still new enough to me, or I should say, I'm new enough to her that she's trying to figure out like, is this guy gonna be willing to accept some criticism, you know, or like, you know, to have fresh eyes say, hey, this is garbage, you need to change, you know, and, uh, but <laughs> is that how you want heart, to be talked to Chad? This right? is garbage. No, you need to change. Right. That's the gist of it. <laughs> right. But in my heart, I, I am, I'm willing to, uh, you know, to have a fresh set of eyes to, um, uh, have someone say, you know, I've, I've thought about, uh, you know, your, your problem and you're just, uh, you know, like you think there's only these two solutions. Um, what, what about this third solution and waiting it out while I might say, ah, I don't like that. But in the end, I'm just like, no, I'm glad to hear a third solution to the, the issue. And, uh, uh, so having a, a fresh perspective on it. Yes. So, um, it's, ever since we were looking to that change, I think a lot of people would have been like, Oh no, I like who I'm working with. And, and, you know, I'm not quite sure. And of course that's true. Um, but I thought it would be, uh, advantageous to myself and to everyone in the office to have someone say, wait a second, Carrie might've, you know, 
not had a forte for putting up with that baloney, but I'm, I'm not, I'm going to call it out, you know, like, why aren't we working on that? And having, you know, someone, you know, with a fresh set of eyes to be like, oh yeah, I guess we are kind of tolerating that. And why, why don't we maybe ha- uh, take a new crack at trying to solve that problem? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm digging it. <laughs> So, Denny, having worked with lots of different business owners in different industries, including dentistry, what are there? Are there some things that surprise people that you've seen when they finally reach out and say, I'm I'm ready for coaching, consulting, a thinking partner, anything like that? Is there anything that you think surprises them along the way? Are you asking during the process or during and after, I would say during and and the results that they get? Well, I think. You know, I think people who are truly in a mutually beneficial thinking partnership, which I believe our coaches are, I mean, I think they get as much out of our partnerships with our our doctors as, you know, as the doctor gets. I don't, I think difference between maybe, uh, you know, advice or mentorship or something like that is that the key difference uh, with this is that it's a partnership and it's mutually beneficial. And so, I think people are shocked at how fast they can get results when they get out of their own way. And what I mean by that is if they can just take their ego and set it on the shelf for a minute, sometimes what comes after that, if I can just set it aside and just go, maybe, maybe if I listen carefully here, I'm going to pick up the one piece I was missing. You know, I'm going to find out that uh, you know, that something is something I something I'm doing could be different than that. And, uh, you know, I mean, we just spent two days working with our coaches on uh, basically presenting their results. So we went through every single client and we talked about, uh, you know, what were some of the challenges that they were having? What were some of the successes? And, um, you know, despite the fact that we have a 10 to one return. So you hand me a dollar, I hand you 10. When you go through our coaching, there's still challenges and there's still these thought partnership needs. You know, we talked a lot about the stress that doctors are having and, you know, if they would, you know, get into some thought partnership around that. I mean, I don't know if we didn't talk about a single client that we have that doesn't have stress and that, you know, has lack of commitment sometimes, but you don't often see that in yourself. You don't always see that you have a lack of commitment or that, that you're not moving as quickly as you could. And that's what that thought partner does. That thought partner like calls you on your stuff. You know, they call it out and they go, you know what, I'm, I've missed three calls with you in the last couple of months. And you know, we can't move forward at the pace we need to move forward unless you and I are in this partnership together in this thought partnership, because that's where all the creativity happens. So, I mean, you know, it is, I think people would be shocked if you're listening to this podcast, how fast you could move forward if you set your ego on the shelf beside you for a minute and everybody got into that thinking partnership because it'll make you move fast. It just makes it move faster. So let's say that there are two ways that people can get a, a a thinking coach, a thinking partner. One um, on this podcast would obviously be to, you know, call up PDA, go on their website and, you know, try and go through the process of uh, finding out if uh, productive dentist Academy is a right fit for coaching. And, um, and then I imagine if they w- would specify, you know, I'm kind of interested in that podcast about that, that thinking partners partnership, you know, what would that look like? And, you know, stuff like that. Another way would be to think of someone who naturally might fit that role in your own life. Um, I mean, it could be a spouse, it could be a parent, it could be a child, actually, uh, you know, like a grown child that you might have a good relationship with that you could bounce ideas off, it might be someone that you've known for a long time, or someone that you actually might reach out and say, Hey, I know I haven't known you for a long time, but you seem like you would be a good mentor for this for me. Could we get coffee once a month? But um, within those two parameters, um, what, what would that look like for someone that is wanting to say, Oh, that's neat. Theoretically to how would I get this by Thanksgiving by Christmas? Like, what would this look like? They would be able to move forward fast by Christmas. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm just curious if someone said, okay, I just heard this podcast. I want that. 
Now, and I don't know anyone in my own life who would naturally fit that bill really quickly. So, I mean, how, how do I make that happen within Productive Dentist Academy? Well, you definitely, I mean, if you are, you're definitely can call me uh, at any time. I, you know, my, my job is to figure out how we get you on board at PDA and get you uh, with a coach and get it going quickly. Uh, so is you your can, last name in an email? Like, is it, uh, or is it just it's D-E-N-I the first name. I Correct. at ProductiveDentist.com? Yep. D-E-N-I at ProductiveDentist.com. You can email me anytime and I'll get right back to you. So that's a way that you could do it at Productive Dentist right now. Nice. So if someone came to you with this, like what kind of, what kind of goals would they be coming to you with? Like what, 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 what kind of problems have you seen historically, like over, uh, since COVID, let's just say of mindset kind of things that people are trying to change? Well, I think that, um, like we discussed at our performance meeting over the last couple of days, you know, how do I, you know, stem the bleeding from the turnover? You know, how do I fix turnover? How do I create a culture where I don't have turnover? I think that's one of the biggest things. Like people think that the problem is turnover, but upon discovery and a little bit of conversation, it's more about the culture that's being created. And what am I doing to create a culture that's in alignment with my core values? And how do I live those core values? And then how do I weave that core values into my marketing so that I attract the kinds of patients that I want inside my practice? So I think that, um, you know, they may come to us with a problem that they're having. Maybe they need to get their production up. Maybe they're, they're suffering from, you know, lack of production or lack of new patients or uh, just leadership in general. But in the end, it starts at the beginning. If I don't have myself straight on my core values, then I'm always going to have what I call cognitive dissonance. You know, I've got two opposing things going on. I've got core values, but I'm not showing up with my core values or I've got core values and my my practice doesn't show my core values. So how do I fix that? And that's what the thinking partners and coaches that are at PDA can help you do is sort through getting that set up so that you do have an environment where people want to work and they're excited to come to work. When your people are excited to come to work, they excite your patients. And when your patients are exciting, they go out and refer others to your practice and it grows organically. But it all starts at the beginning of me being willing to accept the fact that maybe the culture inside my practice just needs a little tweaking, just needs to be, uh, it needs me to think through it a little bit more. What do I want it to be? How do I want it to feel when people uh, enter the door of my practice, both my employees and team and my, my patients? Right so, on. Well, cool. Well, Regan, I think that's a good stopping point for people to, I mean, because listen, at some point or another, people just need to do it or right. not. I mean, you know, continue with your bias or oh yeah, someone to run the ideas by. Victoria and I were just talking yesterday, uh, our, our CEO and, and her and I were breaking it down in simplest of terms. And we were just chit-chatting and, and she said, you know, it gets down to this. It's either a data problem. It's something with the systems. It's something with scheduling. It's something, you know, binary data or it's relationship. And that's the customer service side. So it could be your culture. It could be the team turnover. And, um, you know, when you break it down into those two basic buckets, you got a data problem or you have a relationship problem. And the truth is you probably have a little bit of both in there. Sure. It's, it's complicated. It's like the Facebook status, relationship status. It's complicated. It's and complicated. <laughs> if I think that, I think that's the, the perfect way to, to cap it off. You know, you, if you want someone to bounce those ideas off and get you where you're going faster, you know, reach out, there's no harm. Yeah. Well, like thank it. you, Denny. Thank you, Chad. Thank you for another great episode of Everyday Practices. Uh, Denny, uh, one one thing to, to leave you with, um, if, if you have this, w- one thing, um, if you wish people thinking about reaching out today, is there one thing you wish that they would know before they, they pick up the call and pick up the phone and call? I guess what I hope that they, un- that what they know is that um, we're here to help and that 
our our mission is really to uh, take you from point A to point B and then on to point Z in the lifetime of your practice and have an idea of what's your why. Why would you want to call us? You know, be prepared to be asked questions like that. Like, why are you in dentistry? <laughs> Think about that before you call, because we're going to test you on that. We're going to push you a little bit. That's what thinking partners do. Excellent. Cool. Thank you. Uh, thank you for another episode of Everyday Practices podcast, Chad. Yeah, thanks, thanks for everyone having for me. joining us. Have a great rest of your day. See you on the next podcast. Thank you for listening to another episode of Everyday Practices podcast. Chad and I are here every week thanks to our community of listeners just like you. And we'd love your help. It would mean the world if you can help spread the word by sharing this episode with a fellow dentist and leave us a review on iTunes or Spotify. Do you have an extraordinary story you'd like to share or feedback on how we can make this podcast even more awesome? Drop us an email at podcast at productivedentist.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts from Productive Dentist Academy at productivedentist.com slash podcasts. See you next week.